Hello there lovely people, it's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and huzzah and hurrah, it is finally time for us to do a massive big Zelda-thon and talk about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. No faffing around this time, let's dive right in with that review, so strap yourselves in, it's gonna be a bumpy one. If Mario's all about precise mechanics and pure fun factors, Zelda is all about storytelling, world building, and that classical trope of good versus evil. However, it could be argued that the evolution of the series has been slow since the release of Ocarina of Time, despite Nintendo efforts. But all that's about to change with this sucker. Breath of the Wild is still quintessentially Zelda, don't worry about that, but the old formula has been drastically overhauled to the point that it's basically been ripped up and rewritten from scratch. It's the most ambitious Zelda game to date, and thankfully the efforts of two years of delays has paid off. The series has as a whole stuck to a template for its narrative, with Link returning at the start of every game to save the land from Ganon, although sometimes things were different. Majora's Mask. This time around, things are familiar, yet not as straightforward, accessible, yet more mature. Oh, and don't worry, we're not going to be spoiling anything in this review, you've got the Alex guarantee of that. And that's worth having. Yeah. One of the more unusual features is how Nintendo has managed to work in cutscenes without being disruptive. Some will run for all players, whilst others are only accessible through optional work outside of the main objectives. It's nothing revolutionary for gaming as a whole, but it's still definitely a breath of fresh air for the series. Perhaps even a fresh breath of the wild. Seemingly key historical information about Hyrule is told through apparently throwaway remarks. You're not just spoon-fed endless lines of exposition over and over again, which successfully follows the idea of show, don't tell, that makes the narrative all the more engaging. Of course, you can experience about zero of the story if you want and just run straight to Ganon, but uh, that's almost guaranteed suicide. The reality of the game is, of course, that the whole thing is a truly open experience. Not just in the sense of the world, but also what you do in it. Right from the start, you can wander off and do just, well, whatever you want, but it's certainly worth sticking around on the plateau that you've no doubt seen countless times before to get a real feel for the game. In many ways, this entire area almost acts like a tutorial, but without actually being a tutorial. And more importantly, you'll be encouraged to experiment as much as possible. You'll learn about cooking food, using Link's various abilities, and how far you can fall without dying. It's all important stuff. And thankfully, despite the daunting amount of freedom on offer, the small instructions that pop up on screen ever so occasionally do an excellent job of helping you grasp the basics without being overwhelmed or just getting bored of it. When you do fail to understand something properly, you'll probably die, and you'd better get used to it. As my dad always used to say, it's the only way you'll learn. Thankfully, the autosaves are pretty constant, so you'll only lose one, maybe two minutes of progress at a push, but it's still enough to tell you what a silly bugger you've been. But how do you go about organising all this freedom? Where's the quest system? That'll be the adventure log, my dear chums, and it's not as linear as many others. When you start up the game, your end objective is very clear, but attempting it right away is, well, it's a stupid thing to do. Instead, as you explore, small pockets of main missions and side quests open up, causing everyone who likes a nice, empty quest list to break down in tears. And as you explore, you'll get to see the grandeur of this Hyrule in all its grandeur. Adopting a typical trope of these games, you're tasked with finding and climbing towers scattered throughout the place that unlock that particular section of map information. Also, just being on the top and seeing Hyrule from this height is absolutely wonderful, and it's really useful as well. If you see something interesting on the map, you can just put a waypoint on it, just pink like that, and then wander over at your leisure. These tools also help you keep track of what you want to come back to later, resulting in quite a scatty looking map of Hyrule full of pins and waypoints and doodads. Part of the joy in Breath of the Wild is just doing as you please, providing you're well enough equipped. You'll constantly be gathering food, items, weapons, and valuable resources, and by buying and selling goods, you'll be able to indulge in further exploration. You don't have to do any of this, of course, but if you don't put exploration, accumulation of items, and most importantly, survival, at the very top of your list of priorities, you're gonna have a very tough time. You have to embrace nature in this game, but also give it a light touch, because if you squeeze too hard, it'll just bite you in the ass. There are also great big nuggets of typical Zelda goodness to be found whilst exploring. Instead of traversing that mountain range, try following a beaten path and eventually you'll come across settlements and other Hylians. Either that or it'll be a bunch of ruins destroyed by, well, I couldn't tell you what. 
No, really, I can't tell you what because I said no spoilers. These places are on the whole extremely optional, but given the interactions and humour to be had with these inhabitants, you'll want to meet as many people as possible. And these moments of joy aren't uncommon either, but some of the most memorable of them came to us towards the end of our playthrough, but as is the nature with a non-linear game, these may well appear sooner to you than they did for us. And good gracious gravy did they vary. From light-hearted quirky sections to world-changing events, we got totally and utterly engrossed in everything. Many comparisons could be drawn to things like the Elder Scrolls series, which is fair, but uh, the big difference being in this game, the combat is actually good. Breakable weapons and the ability to quickly disarm and steal items from enemies means you'll be constantly looking to switch things up. Long weapons, short weapons, bows, heavy weapons, there's variety in murder that's unparalleled for the series. As for the visuals, well, I know you've seen it on YouTube and stuff like that, but seriously, that compression does not do the game justice. The whole thing is like a watercolour painting, and it's shows just how much beauty there is to be seen in stylized graphics instead of the ultra-realistic alternative. And hardware-wise, the Switch holds up pretty well with such a lot to render, but in larger battles and other processor-heavy situations, you will notice the occasional drop in performance. It's by no means a deal-breaker, but if Nintendo were to patch things up in the future, we certainly wouldn't say no. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is not only a landmark game for the series, but also just for Nintendo as well. It's the first time the company has properly taken on the open-world genre in a modern sense, and even though it's a bit late to the party, it takes the best of other games like it whilst forging its own incredible strengths to boot. The game is without a doubt an absolute revolution for the series, and that is why we are proud to give The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild a 10 out of 10. It's very different, but the soul of Zelda is still very much there, and the end result is just pure magic to behold. This is in the running to be the very best game in the series, and Nintendo's brave efforts and massive risks have really paid off. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you take a nice, long, deep breath of the wild for that subscribe button, and be sure to check out nintendolife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Oh,